Hey everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. Thanks for sticking around with us. I'm Kathleen and I'm here with Mark Curley. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much, Kathleen. It's a pleasure to be back here. Yes, not your first time live not, not my first time. It was two years ago was my first time, so I should technically be better <laughs> than I was last time. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Famous Chat. last words. Yes, give Mark a nice warm welcome as I Thank just kind of introduce you to what we're going to be doing this week. We are focusing on mobile illustration this week, which is near and dear to my heart, so I'm super excited about that. And we've got Mark here. He's going to be working in Photoshop Sketch, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but before we jump into the actual work, let's introduce Mark. He is an author, educator, manga creator, otaku extraordinaire. How would you describe yourself? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm that guy who got lucky enough to get some comic books published, and I never looked back. There you go. That is lucky. Every year they continued allowing me to do this uh, for a living, and so... I keep cool. at it, yeah. Nice. People are saying hello. Mitch says hello from Logan, Utah. Hello Hi, from Mitch. Wisconsin. You said that you... Wisconsin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you said there was someone even in chat that you recognized from meeting in London years and years That's right. Ago. Sharni. Uh, I, I hey, met Sharni, Sharni in uh, England. I'm pretty sure it was years ago up in Manchester. Nice. Sharni, is that you? Hi. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan says, uh-oh, Mark is a righty. Where are my lefties at? I'm a lefty. I, I can try to draw the whole thing. It'll be the <laughs> left-handed challenge. It'll look terrible. But. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So you might also know Mark from his YouTube channel, where he creates tutorials, educational videos. What else What else do you put up there? Well, yeah, I started off doing mainly these manga tutorials back around 2006 or 2007. Yeah, I guess it was 2006. Uh, and uh, from there, it sort of blossomed into all kinds of other stuff, and I do realism drawing tutorials nice. and uh, challenges and uh, all manner of stuff. Very cool. All that good YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to show some of your work so the chat can know oh, what is really going on in Mark Curley's head. Let's jump to the GoPro, GoPro and you can show <laughs> off oh, okay. your, your work. work. This, this is, is the magic behind the work. work. All right. So, so this, this is Brody's Ghost. Ghost. This, this is my graphic, graphic novel series. series. It came out as six... Uh, uh, separate, separate books, books but they, they combine it all into a single super thick volume oh, no. and when you drop it on the table it goes thud. <laughs> That's awesome. That is six years of work there. And then we have uh, Manga Art. This came out last year so this is this would be my newest book normally mm -hmm. uh, but we have one more newer one. A secret. Chibi. This one is not supposed to be out until March 20th but I got my uh, advanced copies the other day, so I thought I gotta bring this to San Francisco, yeah. show this to everybody. Very nice. And uh, very excited about this. Yeah. Are you allowed to show any of the inside or is it all secret? Oh, I can show some let's of the inside. Right let's flip right through. Well, let's see here. This is the opening um, title page. Cute. They gave me space where I can sign it if somebody wants a personalized copy. There you go. Then there's my little librarian character. You gotta have a librarian character. Of course. When you're Especially doing TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm wondering, your characters are also different from each other. How do you make them so stand out from each other like that? Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, certainly with the Chibi project, I really had to uh, uh, challenge myself to, to take it to a higher level mm -hmm. and um, make sure that I was doing the best quality work. And so I was looking really at Chibi uh, you know, illustrations that I admired and studying them and seeing what it was that made them look so good. Yeah. And then you know, taking those various little techniques and blending them together into creating my own Chibi style. There you go. And I was telling Mark before the stream, these kind of how to draw manga books was actually how I learned how to draw in fourth grade. So this right. brings back a little nostalgic tear to <laughs> Cool chat. So thank you so much for being here with us. We've got Mark until 1 p.m. Pacific time, in which time we will be giving away a giveaway in about an hour. And we're also challenging you to work on a piece of art and Mark will pick his favorite, the strongest piece, the best piece at the end to win a free year of Creative Cloud. So the challenge today is to create a robot and is based off of your, I believe it's your Gax character. Well, I'm going to be doing a robot uh, ah. based off of my Gax character, but mm -hmm. I, I'm sure they're encouraged to do any kind of creative robot type of design they want mm -hmm. to do. So. Definitely. And we want to encourage you, chat, to use the free CC mobile apps. We've got Photoshop Sketch, Illustrator Draw. You could even throw some capture in there and make your own brushes. We have until 1230 to work on those. Any kind of robot you might dream of. You could also use Illustrator or Photoshop. Get those submitted to us, and we'll pick a winner at the end. Mr. Director says, robot, 
Oh my gosh, I'm gonna enter. He's oh, excited. Shiny. I Hello, hope shiny. to get the chibi book soon. Thank you, Sharni. I hope you can get it. I really appreciate your support. Yes. Years nice. of support I've been getting from Sharni. Thank so. you, Sharni. And chat, thank you for being so supportive and kind. Uh, let's jump into this. We've got your iPad up on the screen. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing. Now, uh, some of you may remember Gax uh, from my um, Akiko comic book series. Mm -hmm. And in, indeed, the first uh, drawing that I did years ago when I came to Adobe to do a, um, a digital drawing demonstration for the first time was a drawing of Gax. And so I thought in sort of tribute to that, I would return to the scene of the crime and do a drawing of Gax, but my concept was to sort of do Gax on steroids Ooh. Uh, and sort of make an even uh, tougher, kind of crazy version of Gax uh, in which he has uh, limbs and uh, all sorts of uh, Very cool. different high-tech items. And I thought even people in the chat could get into <coughs> the process and help me out and give me ideas for things that I could work into this. Uh, drawing, but I'll tell you what I'm doing right now is I'm beginning with a sort of a base layer of uh, pencil strokes, and I'm always kind of blown away uh, by the software and how much it resembles actual pencil strokes to me. I mean, I can't even believe that uh, right. it's just digital stuff. Totally. It really feels, and uh, Michael. Shays mm -hmm. was telling me yesterday about how the they've got this film over the surface uh -huh. of the iPad Pro that makes it a little more paper-like, has yeah. a little texture to it. I believe that's what it's called. Isn't it called paper-like? Paper-like? Maybe. Maybe it is. And if it is, I sure did get lucky. Uh-oh. Why uh -huh. are you hiding? <laughs> I just like, hide this guy. Some magic is happening. <laughs> Michael Shaz in chat is like, oh my gosh, what did I say? <laughs> Nothing um, bad, Michael. So Nothing yeah, it is, it's interesting because if you get used to drawing on paper, um, drawing uh, on like a, a normal iPad might feel a little bit like drawing on glass, you know, so it could kind of throw you off. Mm -hmm. And with this uh, this paper-like uh, film that they've put on it, it really does. It feels incredibly like you're drawing on. It's uh, really nice. Yeah. And Mr. Director in chat uh, has a thought. He says, I'm in my 30s and I wouldn't know how to draw using a mobile app. What do you think about that? I think that's a little bit defeatist. Oh, I think you got to give it a try. You know, I'm, I'm I'm the guy who barely ever did anything uh, digital until just a couple of years ago, and you know, I think in the early years when they were first creating these things, it would have been a challenge. But mm -hmm. they have uh, really uh, improved this software until it feels so much like just drawing. Yeah. Uh, with the advantage, of course, of the sort of undo button. Oh yes. So that if I That's sneeze, ah <laughs> oh. Then I just hit the undo. Oh yeah. Right. You can also use two fingers, swipe to the left. <laughs> you get oh really is that intuitive. right? Two fingers swipe. Well, let me oh, try yeah. this. Two fingers. I'm not lying to you, Mark. Oh, <laughs> Kathleen! I'm a wizard. <laughs> Welcome to and my show. And you programmed that, right, Kathleen? Yes. So I should thank you personally. I am Adobe Incarnate, <laughs> Adobe Sensei. And We're I'm already a getting a little bit loopy here, folks. <laughs> Please forgive me. It's uh, it's the Adobe uh, Cappuccino. They allowed me to have one. True. We allowed you one. Yes. One Cappuccino only. Don't let only. him have any more. So this, I'm kind of doing a weird uh, a, arrangement of Gax-like characteristics. Mm -hmm but uh, altering it as I go. Very cool. So what makes Gax Gax, and what are these little alterations you're making? Well, Gax normally, this body shape here of uh, the Gax robot mm. is what the standard Gax would be like, and then he would have like four wheels, and then this sort of bendable neck is definitely one of the, one of the definitive aspects of Gax. Normally, that would attach to the center underneath this sort of rectangular head. Right. Um, so it is, it's already starting to look like some weird Gax-inspired ah. monster robot. And I thought, well, what, why not give him some kind of like uh, tail fin kind of a thing back here. Gotcha. A little rudder. Now, have there been any suggestions in the chat about stuff that I ought to no. try to work into? Come on. Help chat, me out here, be guys. brave. Let us know what you would like to see. I want you guys to have <clears throat> an effect on this drawing and, and know that it's a one-of-a-kind drawing that uh, took shape in because part based on your suggestions. Definitely. Um, but I have seen people do this uh, with digital drawings that they'll begin with a really loose sketch 
on one layer and then uh, begin to uh, do final art on subsequent higher layers. Right, that's how I work also. Oh, okay, yeah. So I thought, I want to try this uh, approach. Gotcha. So we have Renee, who's a fellow Adobe friend, saying you could add blinky lights. Blinky lights. Blinky I love lights. it. Not I blinking. Love... Blinky. Blinky. Make them blinky. Yes. And then we have Aaron recommending that you use the blushies. <laughs> the blushies. <laughs> that would be cute. Okay. Now, hang on a second. If I'm going to do blushies, I'm going to have to break out the uh, eraser tool here for just a second. Mm -hmm. Double tap. Let's see if I can do all this stuff. It's now, a test. the flow, yeah, the flow is at 100%. And the size has been. What I want to do is because if they're going to have me do blushies, I need to erase the head. And this is kind of nice, shows you that you can, in fact, you know, when you've gotten past that undo stage, you can go back and erase things. I thought I should tilt his head um, so that he's facing toward us. How's gotcha. that for spontaneity? Folks? Let's do it. Ooh. What am I doing? What happened? <laughs> you are the creator. Oh, okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to have him facing a little bit toward us, and I will actually include space for blushies based on the suggestions of the studio audience. Mm -hmm. Now, that. Kathleen, do you know about blushies, the importance of blushies? You know, I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wait, you, is, you mean it's that easy? <laughs> To figure it out, I can't believe it. I'm a fan of blushies. Oh, are you? Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, everything's <laughs> so kawaii. So kawaii. Something about my channel, the uh, concept of blushies, just took over at huh. the stage. And if I ever did a drawing without blushies in it, boy, the, the blushy police would be out. <laughs> the blushy police. The cutest police. In full police. force. <laughs> I'm going to go back now to the erasing stuff here. And uh, some because when I changed the direction of his... Face, and somehow the head wasn't working anymore. So there I'm we go. go back in there. And it seems like you are comfortable using the eraser as a tool. Do you often use it when you're freehand drawing, or do you sketch on top on tracing paper? Oh, I definitely uh, use the eraser plenty um, in my day to day uh, drawing life. And I do think that, you know, people should not feel that it's a, a badge of shame that you had to erase something. Right, no. It definitely, uh, uh oh, what happened? <laughs> did I actually, did I shut it down by mistake? Uh oh. Sorry, Maybe. folks. Oh no, it's back, it's back. The I ghost probably the machine. Put, I put my hand in the wrong place. <laughs> so, okay, I think we're. We're going to be okay now. Perfect. And Coco Intolerance says, can we use regular Photoshop for the challenge? Yes, Coco, you definitely can. You could also use the mobile apps if you have a CC subscription. Send them through Adobe Magic to your desktop and finish it up in Photoshop CC if you're interested. I know that's a lot to learn on the fly. Mike says, you broke it. You destroyed it. It's all right, Mike. Okay. It'll be all right. Uh, All right, so I'm going to try to get a little more, um, get a little looser with the line work here. Mm -hmm. And let's start sort of doing that sort of uh, pinching action. And you can really see when you go in like this, to me it's incredible how much it resembles actual uh, pencil lines. Definitely. That's why I love Photoshop Sketch the most out of all of the drawing tools that Adobe offers on mobile. Uh, we will have Kyle T. Webster coming up, I believe, next. And he has a huge, awesome brush pack that you can use not only in Photoshop, uh, in your CC desktop apps, but you can also use it in the mobile apps. And he will be walking through how to add your favorite brushes to the mobile apps and um, how to use them most effectively. Yeah, I was sort of practicing earlier, and I noticed that uh, a lot of these brushes have Kyle's name on them. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to get to meet the guy who designed the brush. Meet the guy, definitely. I know. I'll be like uh, a, a brush uh, fan saying, I'm, I'm your biggest <laughs> fan. Your biggest Kyle, brush fan. Kyle, can you sign? Sign my brushes, <laughs> <laughs> my digital brushes. <laughs> Um, we have a question, and I just missed it because chat's going so quick. Oh, Thomas says that he's using Kyle's brushes for the robot. That's awesome. awesome. Going to get some great texture. I believe someone was wondering what other comic or manga artists are you inspired by? Oh, wow. I have so many. Um, you know, when I was working on Brody's Ghost, um, Death Note was a huge uh, oh, heck influence. Yeah. That's right. And, Did you uh, watch the live action movie on Netflix? You know, I heard bad things about it. I saw like it the, the trailer <laughs> for it, and I thought, I don't know if I can... Uh, 
handle this. Now, would, can you help me out here? Because I think I did something sure. wrong and, and everything went away where I can sort of tap undo and so of forth. Course. What did I do? So you should be able. Is there a little icon in the top right? Oh, there, there we go. go. And it came back. Thank you so much. There you go. And I'm even flipping through this. I feel like the main character kind of even looks like Light from Death Note. Now, um, last time I was here, we didn't have uh, layers to work with. So gotcha. I'm looking forward to being able to start playing around with that. Mm -hmm. And I thought what I would try now is to... Um, well, let's show that idea of uh, doing an inking layer. And uh, if I go here, I want to find what I was talking about, the, um, the Kyle brushes. Sure. So if you long hold if on I one long of the brushes. Hold. Okay, there we go. There mm -hmm. we go. And I found one that I really loved. And what was it called? Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. There's a lot of brushes I know. for a mobile app. Leaky fountain pen. Uh -huh. That was the one that I loved. That's and a nice one. Let's zoom in here and see. Because I was, as I was fooling around with this earlier, I was really pretty amazed. Now, so this is the one that this is the leaky fountain pen, and I can. Uh, it's at like. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, okay. Definitely need to undo that. Now let's go to uh, make this black. I thought you were gonna be maybe inking with some orange. That would be interesting. Yes. Well, that's. Uh, I think it, that was a leftover. See, now look at that. To me, it's really amazing. The. Uh, I gotta. Seriously, when I see Kyle. I'm, I'm going to be like, dude, <laughs> How'd that you do is that? so sweet. I mean, look how it, it really has this really interesting texture to it that I think is just awesome. It looks so organic, you know what I mean? It's very tasty. Yes. Michelle says that she thinks Gax needs a little robo puppy friend Ooh. nipping around at his little robo ankles. Okay, now that is an idea. Hang on a second. <laughs> we'll straighten this out. Sure. Let's go ahead and do that then. Let's work that right in. And so if I switch back to the pencil and we'll do a little robo puppy here. Perfect, I'm making sure that you're on the right layer. So oh you yes, thank that. you. <laughs> thank you, Kathleen, mm -hmm. for reminding me. I almost messed up. So. No worries. A lot of your viewers that uh, watch your YouTube vi videos are surprised to see your face. That's right. I, I normally just show my hand. Everyone's very familiar with my hand. <laughs> but they don't see my face. Somewhere. Got a hand cam? The hand face cam. cam. I'll just put the hand in front of my face and be like, <laughs> yes. oh, I recognize him. <laughs> Your face is a hand. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we'll give him a little, I'll uh, have the puppy dog doing that sort of classic uh, seated uh, pose. Cute. Ooh, I like him already. Oh, well, thank you. <clears throat> People are wondering, since you do have, follow such a style that was, born and raised in Japan. They're wondering, do Japanese uh, manga anime characters need to be of Japanese descent? Oh, that's a great question. I think definitely not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, many um, manga published in Japan uh, do not uh, have characters that are of Japanese descent. So right. I think you're definitely free to make them be from anywhere you want them to be from. Right. Um, now, I think this isn't supposed to be an actual dog, right? It's supposed to be like a robo dog? Sure. All right, so here's where I'm going to jump back in with the uh, inky, le linky, leaky, <laughs> somebody help me, leaky You need another cappuccino. Um, yes, I do. Stat. I need a second cappuccino. <laughs> Clearly is needed. I need to start making this look a little more uh, robotic here. So. Ah. But I do love how organic the line is on mm -hmm. these things. I would have thought that it, it's impossible to make such a sort of human-looking line. Right. It's a really nice juxtaposition, the organic lines mixed with the, the sharp angularity of these robot friends. Okay, so I guess I'll give him, oops. I'll give him one of these sort of eyes. Somebody wanted blinky lights, right? Uh -huh. so maybe his eyes later on will be these sort of blinky light robot eyes. Cool. It looks like a toy I used to have growing up, little robot dog. <laughs> Here we go. So... I love the fact that we can work in people's suggestions, that we would not be drawing this dog except if not for the fine suggestions of our chat room audience. Yes, thank you, chat. Madison says, Full Metal Alchemist is a prime example of non-Japanese characters drawn in Japanese style. That's right. That's right. They're and, on this uh, 
I know that some people, you know, it used to be that there was a controversy about whether you had to actually be Japanese to call yourself a manga artist. I don't hear people fighting about that so much anymore. Mm. It used to be like, this is not manga, it was made by an American. Artist. Yes. Uh, and I never really I understood do. why people got so uptight about that, but uh, I think we finally have reached the stage where we don't uh, worry about the nation of origin of gotcha. the manga artist so mm -hmm. much. I'm, I'll give him like the sort of flexible neck here. A nice the, slinky neck. That's right, bend <laughs> in different directions. Chat is wondering if you are surprised by how much illustration has changed in the last 30 years from pencil to paper to digital. Ooh, that is an excellent question. I don't know if I'm surprised. I think, you know, we, we sort of saw in the early days of computers coming in the, the potential for how uh, computers were going to change almost everything. Right. Um, but I think... Everything. Everything. <laughs> um, but I do think that um, we, we, you know, my generation would have thought that desktop computers were, that's the way computers were always going to be. Right. And I think when we got to these uh, tablets and the iPad and all this stuff, that was sort of an interesting uh, pivot point in right. the history of uh, computer drawing that made you see, oh my goodness. And I remember the first time I saw like a Cintiq and someone drawing directly on the screen like I'm doing oh, right yeah. now. I was like, oh, wow. And all the, all the artists around the world started to drool, you know, when mm -hmm. they saw that because they thought, that is really what I want, to and be able they, to draw right yeah. on the screen. But then they got real scared when they saw the price tag. <laughs> Especially in those early days, right? They were oh, crazy. Yeah. But they've, they've really come down now, right? And, well, uh, well. <laughs> still not cheap, but it's good hardware. <laughs> well, I'll let people in on this because I haven't talked about it on my videos, but I, did, I finally bought a Cintiq. Nice. And um, true to my experience uh, and the, the curly curse of technology, huh? I can't get it to uh, connect with the laptop that I currently own. Ah. So I might have to bite the bullet and get a new laptop. Curly to curse. To make it work. But <laughs> that's how they get you. That's, that's true. how they get you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all right, I better maybe move back to my main drawing here or I'll spend all my time. Hey, look at that. It turned out all right. I agree. Uh, and we do have to sort of keep the pace going here because I want to get into some of the uh, coloring and uh, modeling ah. and stuff like that. I don't want this to be only a black and white uh, drawing. Nice. Fang yeah. TV, uh, Mark is using Photoshop Sketch. It's a mobile app and it is free if you'd like to try it on your mobile devices, both Android and uh, Apple devices. This is free? Oh, Mark, <laughs> yes. That is mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Yep, it is free to use. Uh, you can also use it with your CC subscription if you'd like to send your work from mobile to desktop. It's literally magic. You press a button and Photoshop opens on your desktop computer without you clicking anything. It sends over a fully layered PSD or uh, however you'd like to send it. We also have Adobe uh, Illustrator Draw, which is very similar to this, but it works in vectors. So you can send it as an AI file, a PDF, um, get some really crisp, nice lines. And Robzilla, who was hosting previously, is an awesome Adobe Draw illustrator. You should go check out his work. And if you missed uh, their live stream today, you've got two more chances, right? Because they're going to be back. Is that right? Tomorrow right. Tomorrow and uh, oh, yeah. Thursday. Yep. So we have four awesome streams per day. And uh, Rocky will be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Now help me out here, folks. We need more suggestions for how to alter this illustration and make it um, goofy and weird and ah. specific to this live stream so that you can tell people, hey, we changed. He wanted it to go this way. He wanted to zig, but we made him zag. He zagged on him. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch says, Mark makes this look way too easy. <laughs> How well, do you thank feel you, about Mitch. That? Yeah. Um, I must uh, tell the truth that I did uh, a sort of a practice session this morning, and it helped a lot for uh, mm -hmm. refamiliarizing me. Is that a word? Refamiliarizing it is now. me <laughs> with with the software. And I think, yeah, I can't um, overstate how important that first experience was. Uh, two years ago, right when I really uh, started to learn the nuts and bolts of. Nuts and bolts. Oh, <laughs> dude! I, know, right? I did not even intend that. Are you sure? <laughs> so uh, Liam has some bad news for you, Mark. Uh oh, what he happened? says, Mark, you're still drawing on the sketch layer. 
Dun, dun, dun. Every artist's nightmare. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to work this into it, folks. We're Perfect. Work this into this. Now, the, the sketch layer is not the background layer, though, right? True. You're not drawing on the white, but you so are So I can add a new uh, layer uh, down here that can mm -hmm. be a color layer. Let's go ahead and do that, actually, and that will... Um, Great. Um, of course, I can't get rid of these. The pencil and the line work are bonded together. And who, who was be. it who pointed that out because I want to thank them? It was Liam. Thank you, Liam. Uh, because you stopped me before I went any further in, <laughs> with that error. Um, but thankfully, because I'm working in such a loose way... Okay, now this is the color, right? Now this is going to be fun because we're going to finally get into uh, adding some color and I want to give him, I want to start to play around with these sort of muddy, muted colors that I love. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of super bright colors and you'll always see me trying to find these sort of interesting, murky, um, earthy colors. Nice. And let's see what happens when I, okay, that's really big. <laughs> let's stop that. And so I'm going to bring down, so you get, like three or two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do this so fast, I don't think. Once you find your way around the uh, software, and then this fan stops it from blurring, Bleeding. right? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. um, so I'm going to just go ahead, and this is in the under layer beneath my inking layer. Nice. And actually, I wanted to do this because I wanted to show how sometimes I will do the coloring first. People who've seen my YouTube videos have seen me do this sometimes. Do the coloring first before I do the inking. And I'm kind of rep replicating that process here uh, digitally. Um, and th this is the flow. Is that the same as like opacity to a degree? Uh, Let's see what happens. Because if I want yeah. if I want to obliterate that, I'm probably using the wrong tool for that. Obliterate that? What do you mean? The see the pencil line work there. Uh -huh. That's 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 actually on the sketch layer, so gotcha. yeah, I can't obliterate it anyway. Darn you. <laughs> Shoot, you could very oh. precisely erase it. Well, we're, we're going to work with it. There are no mistakes. There are only happy little accidents. Yes. Mr. As Ross. a famous man once said. <laughs> um, we do have a couple recommendations. Oh, yeah? Please. They want you to add old man time lapse <laughs> to this illustration. Please explain this to me. Oh, so now you don't know old man time lapse. I do not. Okay, well, in my videos, for some reason, whenever I would uh, switch to time lapse, mm -hmm. I began to talk about this character, Old Man Time Lapse. And I think it came from Old, uh, old Man Time. Uh, right. Didn't they used to say that, like at the New Year? Uh, yeah. Old Man Time. And would, Baby New and Year. And the Baby New Year. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it came from. But I said, well, it's time for us to bring Old Man Time Lapse in here to help <laughs> us speed through the rest of the drawing. And then eventually I gave him a voice, and he was like, oh, you could never do these videos without me. Uh, sounds a little like the guy from The Simpsons. Yeah, uh, Mole Man. <laughs> I hope I won't get or sued grandpa. for that. <laughs> grandpa. Anyway, um, so yeah, that is, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can fit Old Man Time Lapse into this illustration. Is he a physical character? I've never actually drawn Old Man Time Lapse. There have wow. been a lot of suggestions over the years. Mark, you got to do a video on how to draw Old Man Time Lapse. And one of these days, I'm going to do it. He doesn't have a corporeal form. He's just a voice in your head. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe on uh, Thursday we can do something involving old man ah. time lapse. That might be a fun gotcha. addition. But I th I'm going to try to come up with some way of working him into. So there you, you can see me getting uh, a base of color. I talk about how I like these sort of uh, murky, washed out colors. And I'm going to switch into a slightly different one and see what I can do in terms of mixing them together. Cool, I love that. And gradually making the um, combinations of colors here more interesting, more organic. And every mm -hmm. time I hit this little fan thing, it halts the sort of watercolory spread mm -hmm. of this color, right? People are saying they would also love to see the Brooklyn guy, the guy with the Brooklyn <laughs> accents. <laughs> They're going to make me do all of the accents. going to make you really... Yeah, Quilly, <laughs> you something. are not going to get away without doing the Brooklyn guy. <laughs> Even though you've never been to Brooklyn, you don't know what a Brooklyn accent sounds like. You were born and raised in Michigan. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, then I do have a Brooklyn guy. He's not very nice to you. Yes, I, he's no. He's, 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 he's angry because I don't use his voice as often as Beautiful he feels voice. I should. <laughs> so I wanted to then take a minute and go back to 
Yeah, I mean, the sketch layer and the ink layer have become the same thing now, sadly. Darn it. As they are wont to do, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've learned a little lesson here today, haven't we, friends? <laughs> um, be very careful. About, that happens in Photoshop as well. It's, it comes down to you just being alert mm -hmm. and paying attention to what layer you're on. Always. Um, Kristen says, hello from Detroit. Hello, Kristen. Hello, fellow Michigander. Is that the... That is correct. I'm How did you know that, Mr. Gander? Because no. I'm from your arch nemesis state. Oh, right. <laughs> I know oh, what to call right. you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so much drama. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I really never cease to be amazed at how organic all this stuff can look. To me, it looks really like it was a watercolor and ink illustration. Right. And in a way, that's the challenge to me when I'm doing um, digital drawing is I want, I kind of want it to look as if it were done on real paper and so forth. And I've seen people do amazing mm -hmm. um, sort of oil paint-like effects. Yep. And I'm not quite there yet, but... Uh, You'll get there, especially with Kyle's brushes. There are a couple like acrylic, oil, like you said, pastel, and they really mesh together and move together like they are real medium. Oops, that was a little thick, wasn't it? Um, you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to say, I'm going to do a little bit of graffiti here ah. on the leg, and this is going to be how I'm going to work in Old Man Time Lapse was here. Was here. Let's see. Now, if I hold, all this stuff comes up. Mm -hmm. This is like a marker chisel. Whoops. Uh -oh. What did I do? And you can even add more brushes, but... Maybe you're overwhelmed by them. That's already there. <laughs> she, she already knows me too well. She's like, we don't want to throw him off. Let's right. not, no, let's, he's going to just go crazy if we tell him anything else. Yeah. All right, so if I double tap this, then I can change the color. And what color, help me out here, folks, what Ooh. color? Well, I'm leaning my shoulder in. So tell me, what do you think of my shoulder? Do you, <laughs> uh, what color? <laughs> Do you uh, think that he should sign his name in in marker saying Old Man Time Lapse was here? Let's see, chat. There is a little bit of delay, so they'll probably let you know in about 15 seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cole okay. says, Gax got tagged. That's yes, right. He will right. get tagged. He's just about to get tagged. I'm going to maybe, I'm going to make a decision on my own here. We've and got hot pink, purple, murky green, hot pink. red. Oops, somebody said hot <laughs> pink. My finger slipped. Hot pink. <laughs> I don't know how hot this pink is. But Too hot. Me, I like my muted colors, guys. All right, I'm going to test it out. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh. This is supposed to be marker, huh? It's like a nice dried out marker. Well, I think maybe it's at a large... Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll bring it down to the smallest possible size. Yeah, we've zoomed in quite a lot. It's true. We? So let's see here. Ooh. I'm gonna try to do this sort of fancy spray paint. Does that look like, look like a D? I don't Surprise! Think it does. I think it. I mean, it was nice. It was a good attempt. <laughs> Old. You can tell that I'm not a graffiti artist. I'm actually it? impressed. You're kind of just you. making this happen on the fly. Nice job. And while you're making this magic happen, chat, I want to remind you about the challenge that we have for you today. <gasps> yes, we are challenging you to create another robot creature similar to what Mark is making, but go your own way. Put your own spin on it. So you could use Photoshop or Illustrator, but you could also use the uh, Creative Cloud mobile apps that all of our creators are using this week. This is Photoshop Sketch. You could also use a uh, Illustrator Draw if you'd like a more vectory look. They're free, uh, so no real reason not to use it. You can download it on your tablet or smartphone. So you have about an hour to get those submissions in. We have two submissions so far, uh, which are really, really impressive. And if you don't get your work done this stream, make sure you submit and we will look at it for the next stream. That's right. There's always, anytime uh, we're doing one of these things, we've always got two more chances mm -hmm. to get it right. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and I want to let you know, chat, that if you've won in the past, you should still submit because we'd love to feature your work. Um, so get those submissions in. I'm going to spell it 
W U Z. Nice. <laughs> Just because he he's so hip, he's down with the kids. <laughs> time lapse. Or he's trying real hard to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sharni says, "Nice hot pink." Oh, thank agree. you. Now, who suggested the hot pink? So we got to say thank you. I'm putting you on the spot now. I think Just it say was a name. Jan Eric. <laughs> Am I right? Is you gonna go back? Oh, can you guys go back for? <laughs> Or, They're going to be Mitch. like, never get Krilling in here. He always makes you go. Oh, it was Tim, I think. Jan, Eric, Tim. Similar, but different. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was Tim, one of our fellow awesome moderators here on Adobe Live. Thank you, Tim, for your work. Old Man Time Lapse was here. All right, was there we go. Gone. I'm going to go back to my inking, and maybe I should uh, devote myself to now. Did I lose my inky... Uh, what was that? The leaky fountain yep. pen? Anna it's is asking, will tomorrow's challenge be a robot too? No, Anna, the challenge is always different each day. So I don't know what it'll be tomorrow. It's always a surprise, but make sure you come around at about 9 a.m. Pacific time to find out. All right, so this is the leaky, and if I double tap, I can get back to black. All right. Boom. Now, how are we doing for time? Do you mind my asking just to make sure I don't uh, sure. get too leisurely with how I'm doing things here? You've got about an hour until the challenge deadline. And then after that, there's still more time? There, yeah, there'll be a little time. So I'd say you got about 45 minutes of total physical drawing time left. To be done with this drawing? Sure, if right. that's what you would like to challenge yourself to do, which well. is great. Draw like the wind, <laughs> Krill Dog. For, okay, what character is that? <laughs> that? That's the Adobe live stream character that I just invented. Cool. He's just You've like only a, got 45 minutes. Oh, like he'll be a, like the drill sergeant. I was going to say, a really inspirational drill sergeant. And, I, and later on, I am going to have to draw blushies here because that was what that was all about. And right? we know blushies take at least 30 minutes to draw. Really do that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll spend 15 minutes doing all the remaining inking <laughs> and then 30 minutes working on the blushes. Uh, so, um, Jonathan is wondering did you switch to the correct layer? Yes, you did, I believe. I, think I, did, I think I did this time. Whew. Oh. What a relief. Yeah, at this stage, it's, um, it's pretty loosey goosey, this drawing. Um, and I think that in a way, when you're doing a live stream like this, you have to be aware of what is possible within two hours or whatever. Yeah. And the people who know my YouTube videos may be thinking, boy, he's drawing way looser than he normally does. But that's because I don't have old man time lapse to bail me out <laughs> this time. Yeah, you're on your own, Krilly. <laughs> he stayed home. Uh, so, yes, that's why, you know, I'm just like, I don't, want to get to the end of this and, and not have the drawing be finished. And that's why what I'm going to do right now, actually, is sort of speed through some of this inking stuff. Cool. And then maybe we can clean things up later on. But we have, since we kind of committed to doing this in color. True. Let's zoom through the inking and then we'll see what, if we can salvage. Gotcha. So Michelle is wondering, uh, would Mark ever travel to the UK for a book signing or a meet and greet because she would love to get a signed book? Oh, thank you, Michelle. I would love to go back to England and um, I, I dearly hope that I'll be able to get there within the next few years. Um, I have a good friend who lives in the north of England and it was because of him in a way that I had that Manchester signing uh, years ago. I think it was 2010, mm -hmm. I'm going to guess, that I was last in England. Um, and um, I just have a great uh, affection for uh, England and English culture and, and pubs. And, <laughs> you know, I, we grew up with the music of the Beatles and I right. became a kind of a Monty Python geek. <laughs> and so I, was it Michelle who asked that? Michelle, I sincerely hope. Michelle, tell me, if I am going to go to England, what part of England should I go to so as to make it easy for you ah. to get your books on? There you go. Customized meet and greet. <laughs> Holes says we would love to have you back in England, Mark. Oh, thank you. Who said that? Holes. Holes. H-O-L-Z. Well, thank you, Holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, chat, for being so welcoming to Mark. Mark, do you have any plans for traveling for meet and greets or book tours or anything this year? 
Let's see, what is the next thing that I'm doing uh, that's going to be like a public... So oh, well, you know, I'm going to a lot of book uh, festivals this year, cool. and if you live near New York City, oh. that's definitely one that I'm doing. The Book Expo, I think it's called. It's held at the Javits Center. I can't pull out the dates on the t off the top of my head, but if you Google, you know, for that, you're going to be able to find when that is, and I'm, I'm supposed to be there for quite a lot of it this year. Um, one thing that I'm going to, and I'm really looking forward to this, is uh, in uh, New Orleans. They're going to have me Ooh. go to a book festival in New Orleans. Love that. Yeah. Never been, but I would love to. Yeah. So that those will be maybe the two best um, opportunities of meeting me in person. There you go. Chat, are you taking notes? <laughs> make sure you are. Antoine says, make sure that you come to France as well. Oh, boy, I would love to go to France. You know, <laughs> I was super lucky to get invited to a book festival in um, Norway. Wow. A few years ago. Yeah, can you believe it? Mm -mm. And uh, that was uh, just such a thrill. So you went? I did. Nice. Bergen. Or is it Bergen? Bergen. I'm, sure if I'm saying that right. Any Norway? I don't know if we have anyone from Norway watching, but if you do, I am a huge fan of Norway. It's such a wonderful time there. I've just, you saw me add a little um, loose spring. That's one of, one of the defining characteristics of DX. Yeah, he seems like he might be a little. Uh, maybe not the sharpest, <laughs> tightest <laughs> nut in the, I don't even know. Doesn't seem very smart. See, I'm right? not the only person who can't find the words, people. See, <laughs> it this happens to job. all of us. Um, I'm going to go back to my coloring, and I, I will switch back to the layer. Just allow me to do that. That's the coloring layer. Uh, and let's see what happens here, you know. I like my murky colors. My Marky Murky. Mm, Marky Murky. We've got Jan Eric, and he is in Norway. Oh, hello, Jan. Or the area. What's up, Jan? He's also one of our close Adobe friends, as well as Cedric. What's up, Cedric? We've got Matthias in chat. All so the awesome you recognize moms. these people as Adobe fans, some of them. Oh, and friends. A lot of them uh, work as moderators. Oh, okay. Help us keep the chat friendly, even keeled. Very nice. All right, I got to go back to. What was it? Was it the let's let's just start playing around here. I'm gonna do the Inky Grind Brush by Kyle T. Webster. I'm gonna get to meet Kyle maybe later today, do you think? Yeah, he will be possible? in this room while you are in this oh, room. I forgot it's still hot pink. Oh, oh boy. A lot of people were like, keep it with that. That mm -hmm. looks awesome. That's the um a little too intense. I'm gonna go back and try to find my mur I was gonna go for like a slightly murky green. Very nice. Jan Eric says that he was born in Bergen. City. Oh, really? Nice, Jan-Eric. The more you I know. I had a wonderful time in Bergen um, and did a video. If you're <laughs> curious, I did a video. Okay, here, now it's coming out. Now, this is going to allow me to get a little bit of uh, grit ah. into this. Let's see here. The flow is a little intense. Yeah, I know. We're going to experiment here for a moment, friends. Cool. Um, I'm going to actually make a new layer for this. For experimentation. Because, well, and I want to be able to um, reduce the opacity of the uh, of this layer without reducing the opacity of everything else. Uh -huh. Right? Smart. So that starting a new layer on the fly is going to allow me to do that. But yeah, I think one of the challenges both in traditional media and uh, digital media is trying to get the colors to become more complex. Ah. I think when you have just, you know, one flat color again and again, it uh, it doesn't get that organic look. You can see me trying to, I mean, the size of this brush needs to come down. Yeah, you can see me doing, going for sort of subtle coloration things. Now, again, you said 45 minutes. Right. And I was like, 45 minutes? <laughs> That's a long time That a is short not time. what I signed up for. <laughs> Speed draw. I know. I'm going to just have to, I'm, I'm going to kick it into Mark Crilly time lapse. Ooh, oh, no. Super what time lapse. Uh, Matthias is wondering, is nobody going to draw a GusBot 2000? Somebody needs to draw. So GusBot 2000. A GusBot? Yes. So our friendly neighborhood GusBot is our community manager. He keeps everything running smoothly oh, yeah? on the back end. And everyone is convinced that he's a robot. And I can <laughs> confirm, yes, he is a robot. There's no question. Don't need to wonder about it anymore. 
Um, so let's see. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do green. Here's a little trick for when you need to finish a drawing quickly. Make a lot of things the same color. Ah, nice. And uh, I don't think the dog should be the same color. I'm going to just go ahead and go for a lot of this kind of... Um, what do you call this? It's almost like a military camouflage. Green. Drab. A drab. Yeah. And, um, and that's going to allow me to get... Whoops, that was too big. <laughs> yeah, the really lovely thing about these mobile apps is the organic nature of these brushes. And it depend if you're using an, an Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro, you can really get some really nuanced kind of texture, opacity, velocity even in your, in your mark making. It feels just like drawing in a sketchbook to me, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. I'm really, I never cease to be amazed by the, how organic it really feels. And, and, you know, even for someone like me who hasn't done a lot of this, it feels very natural. If you just play around with yeah. one of these for uh, even half an hour, you will start to almost instinctively begin to understand how it works. And Definitely. And uh, Caitlin is wondering, she saw the little banner on the top of the screen that said giveaway in 15 minutes. So Chad, I do want to let you know that we will be giving away a lovely Photoshop pillow in about 15 minutes. This is a little thank you from us to you for being here, being engaged and being a part of this community. So in about 15 minutes, we'll give more details on how to enter the giveaway, but it has to do with you being logged in to Behance and being active in the chat. And if you've never logged in before and you're just watching, maybe on your second monitor, listening, now's the time to quickly make an Adobe ID, sign in on Behance, and uh, get participating in the chat. Really easy, free, and it comes with lots of perks. So I'll let you know more in about 15 minutes. Siraj says, pillow, yes. <laughs> all hail, all powerful Photoshop pillow. Now, one thing that I feel like this needs, I guess I'm going to just go ahead and quickly dash in a bit more color. I really wanted to try, how much time do you think I have now? Well, I would say you have 30? Minutes? I, I, uh, less than an hour. Let's say that. Less than an hour? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I think you're making great time. Okay, I'll thank tell you. you that. I wanted to try to get a little more light and shadow going on here. That's kind of my challenge. And so I'm going to try to switch to something that's going to be a little more airbrushy. <clears throat> Let's see here. Got to hold down. I love seeing you work through this program, not having used it very often. It's it, really fresh. It I must guess. be interesting to see, you know, someone who's who's new at the process. Yeah, I, my eyes are open to different workflows, different ways of using tools. I love it. Daniel oh, is the eraser tool. What am I doing? <laughs> Daniel's impressed by how realistic the watercolor splotches look. Oh yeah. yeah, well I am too, and I can't take any credit for that. Is the the software is just <laughs> amazing. What am I doing? Come on, Curly. Okay, here Get we it go. together. That's the color is not what I want. I'm moving it to. I guess I'm trying to do just uh, fairly close to black. Uh, let's reduce the flow because it's at like a hundred percent. I really want to try to get some subtle uh, shading. Oh, there we go. Nice. Um, Could lower the opacity as well. If you're I know. I, yeah, I think that's the thing to do. Actually, let's mm. uh, lower the opacity a bit. And then you can really, if I know ah. that I want the light to be coming from the upper uh, left, actually I think I will, I'm going to beef up the opacity again just so that I can, I can get it to go dark when I really want it to. Mm -hmm. um, and then my, what I really want to do is go back in at the end with uh, highlights. I'm going to make a highlight layer. Nice. And that's going to allow us to really, I'm going to just, oops. I was almost a little too confident there, Curly. <laughs> Come on, don't get cocky. Uh, let's just try to jump in here and get some of this in the shadow. Yeah, lay down these darker values. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I see people do amazingly 3D looking stuff, and so that's why I wanted to set myself as a goal today to try to begin to get a little bit of that light and shadow stuff going. Now what you see here, and I'm not super satisfied with what I'm doing here right now, because mm -hmm. to me it looks a little bit like a um, spray can ah. that's running out of paint or something, mm -hmm. and so I'm already thinking, 
we got to go on top of this to make this satisfying to Layer me. Layer it up a little. Um, but that's the nice thing about this is you don't have to say, well, this is this is it, and I have to live with it. I can go on top of this and probably with a different drawing tool, and uh, by layering it up, we're yeah. gonna get closer to what I really want it to look like. But in a way, as uh, and again, I talk about trying to sort of um, conserve your time rather than constantly changing colors. I'm gonna just keep using this same color throughout anywhere where I want it to be super dark. Gotcha. And um, in a way that also has a double uh, positive in terms of sort of tying the whole illustration together because you see the same color throughout the picture right? and it brings a sort of unity to it. Definitely, I think that's a good tip, if, especially if you have problems with color, with value, definitely keeping things unified or even adding a filter on top of everything afterwards or adding some sort of color balance. So yeah, you can see me sort of jumping in here in a fairly bold way. But I do think that I want to make a sort of secondary layer on top of this to make it hang on a second. Nice, and there's definitely a push and pull when laying down values. Sometimes you go really dark, you might lighten it up later. It's really kind of this amorphous living thing. I'm gonna go a little more opaque this time. Um, gotta change the brush, it seems to me. So many interesting, this is the Bristle Bomb Brush ah. by Mr. Kyle T. Webster. Let's see what happens when I do a little Bristle Bomb. Just a little Bristle Bomb. Just a little Bristle Bomb. Um, I'm gonna I get a cooler kind of bluish color. I'm like deliberately trying to go for contrast here. Yeah, okay, not bad, not bad. Whoops, what happened? <laughs> Uh, Renee is giving a tip for working with values if you have a hard time. She'll add a solid gray layer on the top, set the color mode, set the blend mode to color, and turn it on and off so it turns grayscale on and off and it helps you see your values. Nice tip, Renee. Thank you. So yeah, already uh, to me this is looking a little more interesting. It's not just that single wall of uh, spray can color, mm -hmm. but it's getting a little more uh, depth to it. Yeah. And I may even go back into this with a third or fourth color just to keep uh, sort of solidifying it. And to me, it, it looked kind of insubstantial when it was just that one brown color. Right. And for having such kind of murky and earth toned colors, when you mix them all together like this, it adds a lot of life to your work. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have any other suggestions for things that I can add to this illustration that will make it a one of a kind and utterly incomprehensible to <laughs> anyone who hasn't seen this live stream? Right. Why did you do that? Must have context. So I remember someone saying that there should be like Inspector Gadget, Ooh. arms coming off of it, maybe a, maybe a friend for Gax, a fellow Gax. <laughs> Um, let's see, maybe some bluish colors in the dog. That's a good idea, Leslie. Oh yeah, I like the idea of contrasting uh, contrasting colors in the dog. Definitely. Um, I think we do probably need to get a little more shading into the helmet area. I was uh, focusing so much on the, what am I doing here? Uh, body that I didn't add any mm -hmm. shading to the head. People are saying you could put bacon Apparently you put bacon in some of your work. Oh, all right, that's there. A slice of bacon did mm -hmm. make its way into a great many of my videos, so that may have to happen. Maybe we put it in front of the dog. Ah, that'd be good. The little tempting. treat. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm gonna try to fiddle around with opacity here. Oh, and I can't do that. I'll make a new layer. When in doubt, make a new layer. It's a good way to kind of figure things out, but not commit to anything work non-destructively. Uh, Sean is wondering what screen protector is Mark using? I'm pretty sure it's called Paper-like, and it's awesome, Sean. You should check it out. And uh, Kaysen, I believe, was wondering more about how you create your stories for your work. Do you have any tips on creating like timelines, lineages, mm. when you're developing your stories? Well, boy, storytelling is um, one of my favorite things, and it's such a huge topic that it can sometimes be 
tricky to give generalized advice, but I can tell you how the process tends to go for me. I tend to begin with a um, what they call a premise. You know, you have sort right. of a, you have this sort of what if idea for a story, um, and then everything will kind of flow from that idea. So like a famous one, I would say, would be uh, Groundhog Day, <laughs> in which, uh, to me, it seems like at some point, the person wondered, you know, what would it be like to wake up every day and find that it was the same day, like that you'd gone back and started over again, and that you were forced to relive the same day over and over again. It's an interesting kind of a what if question, and that's, right. the, that's the premise, that's what sort of sets it in motion. And then I think at that stage, as a creative person, you have to wonder, you have to say, okay, now, what is a storyline that allows me to explore this weird little, you know, funky premise that I just came up with? And that's when the real storyteller kicks in and says, well, who is my main character? Why do I want them to go on this journey? Are they going to learn something from it? You know, uh, those of you who have seen uh, the movie Groundhog Day, you can see that it kind of becomes a, almost a morality tale mm -hmm. of this guy who's very cynical and burned out and doesn't seem to enjoy anything anymore and is like judging people all the time. And, Right. Um, so they've gone beyond this premise to uh, actually uh, coming up with a story that, that uses the premise as a springboard. Uh, and so that's kind of the way it goes for me. Um, and uh, once I've got my premise uh, and, the, the, and uh, I've found something that I really want to uh, tell a story about, then I'm off and running. Uh, I tend to pla plan the entire thing out. Um, in a kind of an outline form. Gotcha. And I try to figure out what my ending is going to be. Um, I used to just make it up as I went along. Uh, <laughs> but I found, yeah, you can kind of paint yourself into a corner and then you're really in trouble uh, later on. Let's go ahead and get to the dog here. Cool. Um, so, and then beyond that, you know, the piece of advice that I always give for almost anything is learn from the masters, learn from the people right. you admire. So, if you um, if you love uh, J.K. Rowling, uh, Rowling, am I saying that right? Uh, Good question. Her, her <laughs> right, yes, right. We'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> uh, if you love any particular person's work, just um, next time you read uh, the book or uh, watch the movie, study it, you know, and try to uh, learn how did they do that? How did they get those effects? Um, almost anything that you are watching or enjoying just for fun can become uh, a, a great teacher for you, you know. I'm trying a new one here. Ah. What was this one called? Pastel something or other? Gotcha. Dry pastel, perhaps? Pastel. There you go. Um, so we're going to color in the dog with this pastel. Yeah. It's fun to just keep playing around with different things and see what happens. But yeah, someone earlier on had suggested uh, blue for the right. dog, which I think is a fine suggestion. Give a contrasting color. I wouldn't want the dog to blend in too much. Oh, with, I like uh, that. Uh, with Gax. Mm -hmm. Gives him more of a pristine feeling, where Gax is very run down, falling apart perhaps. Now, let me go ahead and I'm just going to leap ahead to... Um, this highlight layer so that you can start to see what my plan is to make this look a little more uh, 3D. Great. And to me that always means going um, to pure white. Ah. And so I go zoom into the middle there, take it to white. Um, I gotta make sure of my size. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna make it just a little bigger. And then here you're going to see me. Maybe I'll take the opacity down just a little. There's no way I could have done this stuff so fast two years ago. Mm -mm. I have uh, happily started to get to that point where the, you know, there's people who are way further along in this process than I am, but you, you get so that you just do it almost without thinking. Right. Are you talking about how uh, you... Push, clicking something, changing ah, the opacity, all these I different see, things that allow you to get what you want. 
I'm adding uh, highlights here, to, uh, and to me this goes a long way towards making it look more solid. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is not the uh, perfect tool for it. Let's go to, let's try marker brush. Uh -huh. See what happens. Uh, Reddo, um, he is using Photoshop Sketch. It's a free mobile app that you can download on your mobile devices, tablets, phone, um, Android, Apple, your choice. Try it out, they're free. Let's try Rough Rake. Ooh, oh, that's very huge. That's uh, an interesting though. Yeah, it was sort of interesting, wasn't it? Nice way to uh, cut down on your time, add some organic highlights. Oh, okay, I see what's happening here. Uh huh. People are saying, is it white gouache time already? Is that what you Yes, that's use? right. This is sort of, they know what I'm doing. I'm trying to uh, emulate uh, white gouache. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, uh, I think uh, we might be able to pull this off. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm going to use this for just a little bit of like highlights here. You can see white going on top here. Nice. And I've put Very this light. all the way at the top. And now I'm starting to pull the pencil down at an angle, which allows you to get this kind of smeary uh, quality. Maybe the flow, the flow is at 100%. Awesome. Uh, but by adding in, you can see it. This is giving it just a little more texture on top of what we already had. Maybe just a little, even on top of the old man time lapse. These yeah. little spatterings, you mm -hmm. know. Looks like scratches and the paint. Yeah. Um, so that's a little trick awesome. for you. A lot like my, uh, what I call the beloved white gouache. That ah. I'm always adding <laughs> uh, a little bit of white on top and it goes a long way towards making it look more solid. That's great. Uh, Kelsey is Photoshop sketch vector based. No, it is raster based, AKA uses pixels. But Illustrator Draw, which is kind of the brother or sister for, uh, app to this program, is vector-based. So if you have a CC subscription, you can send it straight to Illustrator on your desktop in AI file form. So it's a vector. You could also export it as a PDF. And chat, since you are being so kind, so good for being here, we want to do a little something for you. It is time for the giveaway. Dun, dun, dun. Yay! So we'd like to do this every stream. Today's giveaway is Photoshop Pillow. Isn't this amazing? Woo I want one for myself. I'm jealous of whoever wins this. It's very nice. Made in America is the little uh, Photoshop mnemonic that appears at the bottom of your dock before you open it. So chat, the way that you enter the giveaway is all you have to do is be active in chat. Make sure you're logged in with your Adobe ID on Behance. If you're watching from YouTube, come on over to be.net slash live, best place to watch us, or just go to behance.net, click on the live tab. You can see the chat is getting pretty excited already. Uh, so all you have to do is say something in the chat, maybe ask a question, uh, share your favorite Let's see, if you have a favorite brush that you like to use in Sketch or Photoshop, what have you, maybe a favorite Kyle T. Webster brush, let us know which one that is. And uh, once you've said something, you've entered. So we will work some Adobe magic, pick a random winner, and we'll let you know as soon as we do. And ideas are always welcome for uh, altering the course of this illustration. Heck yeah, I love how chat has already put so much thought into this, like the little tattoo, the dog. What else can we get added in here? Yeah, I think it's starting to get a little bit of that uh, solid look that I'm... Let's do a, a little bit of this texture thing, which I love to mm, do. Me I'm too. gonna go back to uh, what I keep thinking of as the sort of inking layer, and I'll go to black, and uh, I guess I need to go back to my uh, leaky Fountain pen. Kyle, when I see Kyle, I'm going to be, dude, the leaky fountain pen, man. Let's talk about it. Oh, that's it. another one of my voices. It's the... Uh, surfer dude? This, uh, yes, the surfer <laughs> dude. Did someone mention that yes, earlier? Yes, he belongs dude. here. West Coast surfer dude. <laughs> that's The great. leaky fountain pen, man. It is awesome. It's totally sick. So I'm going to add a lot of texture here, and then I'm going to show you that uh, uh, by adding little uh, dots of white on the uh, sort of lower right hand side of any of this texture stuff. This really is a great way of making something look solid. Oh. And uh, you can kind of just be spontaneous and not even uh, think about it too much. You just start adding stuff in. 
I see this used a lot in uh, Brody's Ghost. Yes, I'm all about adding sort of the distressed finish to stuff. Oh, oh. You can see all of that texture in there. Thank yeah. you. So, oh my goodness, look at that. Thank you, K.F. Cavling. I yeah. didn't bribe her to do this, I swear. It's just my job. <laughs> uh, speaking of my job, let me continue to do it by announcing the winner of the giveaway. Actually, Mark, would you like to... Oh, announce yeah. the winner. The name okay, is here we go. Teleprompter. Here's the name of our winner. The, the winner is JC. I hope I'm saying that right. J A S E Y. Period. Yay! Congratulations. Yeah, the period is important. <laughs> JC, you are the winner of this Photoshop pillow. Congratulations to you. Adobe Live will be in contact with you via your Behance messages. So make sure that you keep an eye on those. And chat, do not be discouraged if you did not win. We still have the challenge that we're working on and one winner will win a free year of Creative Cloud. And there's also more streams to be had today, so there will be more giveaways, more challenges, and we have also have Wednesday and Thursday, which means more, 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 just for <laughs> you. That's what we specialize in, more, more, more. All right, now have there been any questions that I have failed to answer as we went along the way? Um, I think someone earlier was wondering, um, do you ever struggle with artist block? And if so, how do you overcome it? Oh, great question. And it's, it's a question I get a lot because uh, there are periods of uh, your life as an artist when you just feel uninspired um, uh, and you feel like you're kind of banging your head against the wall mm -hmm. uh, creatively. And I even made a, a video addressing this topic specifically. Ah. And um, I suppose if you just Googled Mark Crilly artist's block video, you are uh, going to probably find that one real fast. Yeah. Uh, but let's see if I can remember some of the specific things. <laughs> um, so well, long ago. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that always works for me is uh, to... Uh, go again to the work of people that I admire. Uh, for me, just staring at a blank page is really hard to uh, work with in terms of coming up with totally. an idea. I really, if I'm looking at something that someone else did, I can uh, maybe springboard off of that and um, uh, get going, you know, and say, well, I'm gonna do my version of this thing. There's a lot of sort of genre type stories that I think if you um, if, if you think about, for example, the heist film, right, where it's all about people trying to break into some building and steal something. Right. And if you just tell yourself, all right, I'm going to try to do my heist story, <laughs> um, you've at least got a kind of framework to start with. And, you know, that may sound like a cliche, but you once you get into it, you make it your own, right? And you end up True. telling a story that's different from all the other heist stories. Um, another thing I think that, uh, that is a problem that people are having these days especially is with the internet we are exposed to other people's work oh, in a yes. way that can be demoralizing and especially mm -hmm. I think frankly there's a little dishonesty from people <laughs> Ooh, in terms oh, well in terms of their use of the word doodle and sketch ah. and people will say oh here's a little sketch that I made it's a little something yeah and I look <laughs> at these things and they're full color and it's just clear that they spent hours on it and they are illustrations and mm -hmm. I'm like why are you calling that a sketch it isn't it's a drawing it's an illustration right and uh, I can't help thinking that it just for someone who's struggling with art that it can be very demoralizing to think oh man this is this person's sketch I'll never be as good as them right and I just want to say this is not their sketch this is not a, <laughs> they're misusing the word sketch yeah That's they're self-inflating exactly and so mm -hmm. um, don't let that get you down um, the whole idea of uh, uh, artists being in competition is uh, false. I think basically I totally we're agree. not. It's not a contest. We're not. Uh, someone else succeeding is not taking away from you. Uh, you're not trying to beat them. Mm -mm. Um, just do the best that you can do. You know, and right. that's plenty. Um, right. And there's so many times, especially if you're a freelance creator of some sort, that maybe someone that might have been your competition can't take on a job and they recommend someone else for it. Um, I don't think that's competition. That's more of, of a network. Yeah. So you don't have to see each other as adversaries, I think. 
And then I've heard from a lot of people who just say that, you know, sometimes you just need a little break. True. Uh, and you don't beat yourself up about, you know, if you haven't drawn anything for months. You're just, uh, you know, you're in a sort of fallow period and, and uh, just keep reading things and keep watching things and uh, you're sort of feeding your uh, storage place of, of inspiration and it's all going to come back when you get back into the groove of things later on. I think just in general, it's very easy for an, a creative person to beat themselves up. Oh, yeah. And you got to, you know, resist that temptation. Um and go easy on yourself and, and say, hey, look, you know, not every uh, month is going to be a banner month of me creating amazing things. Right. Um, but everything you make is a step forward, even if it's a step backwards. Absolutely. Right. You know, and your failures teach you things. Uh, Definitely. That's when you learn the most. And Daniel says the old saying, we are not here to prove ourselves. We are here to improve ourselves. Oh, nice. I like that one. i got to say I've never heard that one before. Yeah, me neither, actually. That's an awesome one. <laughs> um, there is, yeah, I think, you know, modern society is sort of built around competition. Uh, and it does fire some people up. Um, but I think it also can be a, a destructive thing when it comes to creativity. This, this sort of false idea of it's a race. And right. The person who gets across the finish line is the best artist, you know. I struggle with that sometimes too, feeling like I need to hurry up, rush. Not the case. Well, thank you uh, for asking that question. I think it got us into some uh, some good territory. I and agree. Hopefully, uh, helped people out there. Now, I've I've spent a lot of time here just adding texture by way of inking, and now I want to go back in with the uh, white highlights, and this ah. is gonna help us really start to make this look more uh, 3D. So what do I gotta do? I gotta go to the um, color, go to white. Whoops. I think I need to maybe change this to something else again. Ah. And while you're doing that chat, I want to direct your attention to a little countdown that is below both Mark and I. Challenge submission deadline is in about 17 and a half minutes. That's right, it's at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. That is the cutoff point for submitting for the challenge for this stream. So the challenge today is to create and illustrate some sort of robot. This could be whatever you, your little heart desires does not have to be Gax. It could be something similar. It could be something totally different. But all that we ask is that you use uh, the Adobe Photoshop Sketch, Adobe Photoshop Draw, or Illustrator Draw, one of the mobile apps. They are free. They're awesome. You could also just use the desktop versions of Illustrator or Photoshop. Submit those to us. You have about, let's see, 17 minutes now to get those in. And the winner, if you have not won previously, will win a free year of Creative Cloud. And you will have your work featured on Adobe Live, which is very exciting. I'm also thinking that we could do some critiquing, some reviewing of the submissions. That mm. might be helpful for the viewers. All right, well, I'm just trying to get to this uh, white highlight. Uh, yeah, I think this could work. Very cool, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so here you see me adding little bits of white. Mm, to those little nicks that you... Right, and the, the more of this you add in, especially if you're consistent about getting it into the, in my case, it's the lower right-hand corner, this stuff really does sort of work a kind of magic in terms of making it look <laughs> more uh, solid and 3D and decayed and all that good stuff. Very nice. Sophie says, oh, no, I'm only up to the line art of her challenge piece. You got this, Sophie. You can submit line art. It doesn't have to be fully colored. Absolutely. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Sophie. Just do your thing. It'll be fine. Yes, definitely. I would love to actually do this challenge. I think making a robot would be super fun. Maybe I'll do that for my lunch break. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just be stuffing the Now, you've got to show your work, though, Kathleen. That's true. Don't you have to submit your work to the <laughs> show my eyes sketches. of the crowd. Have a portfolio review. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Prepared for this. <laughs> I've worked my whole life. All right. Well, I think we're getting some good texture going on here. How many? How much time do we have? Uh, We've got I 15 keep... minutes until the. We'll look at the submissions. 
So I would say maybe like 30 minutes of total drawing Total time. drawing. Okay, awesome. I think we're going to be able to do all right here. Yeah, I agree. People are saying that you have a good voice for voice acting or doing audiobooks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I when I was in high school, I was in the uh, drama club. Oh. It's not going to surprise anybody here. <laughs> and I... Um, there were eight different plays uh, during my four years of high school, and I was in all eight of them. Wow. So I was totally into acting, and then I went to college. I took one acting class. It was, you know, acting 101. Gotcha. And I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out to be an what actor, happened? real actor. <laughs> well, you know, proper acting is... Um, Re requires you to dig deep, you know. Right. And uh, in high school, a lot of times you're kind of just having fun and doing accents and mm -hmm. and uh, saying, well, well, I can do a British accent. Hello there, everybody. You mm -hmm. know. And, and uh, of course, British people are like, that's not what British people <laughs> that's sound offensive, like. That's, that's Mark. terrible. You have offended an entire nation <laughs> of individuals. But in you know, in high school, you kind of think that's what acting is all about. And when you get to college, in a funny way, they they keep saying to you, stop acting, stop acting. Be oh, yourself, and then it deprives you of that little uh, shield that you've been using, in which you are, you know, putting on a voice or whatever. Right. Uh, and that was uh, that was tough for me, and I realized, you know what, I'm not cut out for this, and um, it helped me. You know, sometimes life is about figuring out where you want to go, what you enjoy most. And uh, I thought I liked acting, but I realized at that stage. Drawing is what I really loved the most, you know. Mm. Uh, although writing, you know, also became a big part of it. So. Yeah, and you've successfully synthesized those things to be your career. And then YouTube came along, and so in yes. a way the voices did eventually come back as, yeah. a, as a goofy sort of side thing that I do. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you are an educator, and you make these videos that are teaching people things. I think you need a little bit of acting skills, public speaking, definitely. Well, thank you. Yeah. And thank the people, the YouTube viewers, who oh. made it all possible. Because uh, I, I started out just like anyone else on YouTube, doing videos that were watched by 10 people or <laughs> 15 people or whatever. And right. little by little, this audience started to show up, and uh, they changed my life. Yeah, do you have any tips on growing an audience, whether it's on YouTube or social media? Well, uh, I know one thing for sure is consistency. People right. like when you work on a schedule and you keep delivering something over and over again. Um, if you if you do one big amazing thing and then you vanish, um, that's you're not going to build an audience that way. Uh, I think, you know, frankly, it's just it's not as easy as it used to be. True, a little oversaturated. Um, because there, yeah, there's just uh, so many people uh, out there, but. I would say it's a combination of uh, consistency, delivering on a schedule, and then finding your own sort of unique thing that you're doing that no one else is doing. Right. Uh, so if you, um, you know, let's say, for example, someone wanted to do uh, at this stage uh, makeup tutorials, <laughs> I would say, boy, you got to find your own way of right. uh, doing it mm -hmm. because there's just so many other people doing yes. uh, makeup tutorials right now that... Uh, you're just going to vanish into the <laughs> ocean of right. people. Now, do you have any ideas with brushes sure. for something that I haven't tried yet oh. that will be kind of opaque and um, oil paint-like maybe? Yeah, so right now we're looking at specifically sketch brushes. Okay. Uh, so maybe if we tap that... Sorry. Take it away, Kathleen. All right. I can kick back and have a drink of this fresh, delicious Arrowhead bottled water. <laughs> Whenever I'm working on a digital drawing... This is my favorite, H2O. I always rely on Arrowhead. Mark, we're not here to promote Arrowhead. <laughs> Take that label off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got an acrylic brush, thick acrylic. Which one of those sounds better? Let's see here. Let's just try. These two. Let's try the acrylic and see what happens. Acrylic. You see what I did there, guys? Hmm? Oh, crickets. Acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. What what can I add here to go along with my sort of muddy, my love of muddy uh, colors? We haven't done sort of a reddish. I guess we did a little bit, didn't we? Oh, we'll add a little bit of warmth to it. 
People are saying, don't forget the blushies. Bring on oh, the blushies. Oh, right, the blushies. The blushies. Oh, Most important goodness. part. Don't forget the blushies, Curly. Cherry on top. Don't think you're going to get away with forgetting the blushies, Curly. Oh, no. We came here for blushies, and we will not leave <laughs> until we get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. I did. I even deliberately left space for the blushies. Wow. Whoa. That's that's, that's very, that is very intense. Blushies require subtlety. Do they? <laughs> a subtle blush. <laughs> a powdering. I'm gonna this really, isn't a makeup I'm gonna tutorial, Mark. I'm going to reduce the, Hey, this is kind of a makeup. Can you <laughs> believe it, You're doing it, it in I'm your own way. I'm <laughs> doing a makeup tutorial. Here's the blushies. Mark Grilly, beauty guru. <laughs> <laughs> They said it wasn't possible, but I showed them. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey says, great session, off to work. See oh, you later. Bye, have a Jeffrey. good uh, day at work. Yes, everyone, I always love to hear what you are all doing while you watch these streams. Are you at work? Are we on the second monitor, like I said earlier? Uh, do you do something creative, or is this kind of your creative outlet for the day? Let us know. I'm gonna bring down the opacity just a little bit. Sorry, guys, we, you know, you gotta keep it subtle with blushes. Cute. All right. Well, let's see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get. I'm going to intensify the flow again for uh, getting some just additional bits of color. Nice. Lindsay says that we are on our second monitor. Daniel's working. Noel is procrasta working. Oh, I nice. like that. I never heard that one. Procrasta working. That's kind of what <laughs> I do. What did I hear someone say? Uh, like, I won't remember it now. But it was like um, faux ductivity, I ah. think is what they call it. We're sort of pretending like you're... Like that. Jenna says we're definitely on the second monitor while she is working away. Awesome. Donna, well, that's cool. I don't I don't remember last time talking about this stuff. It's kind of nice to hear what people are doing. Right. Donna's homesick from work, so we oh, are her chicken well soup soon. for the soul. Get well soon. Yeah, Donna, feel better. Donna. Please. Daniel says Adobe Live is not a good thing for people who don't like to leave the house because they can just have a party from their second monitor. Agreed. Now, last time we weren't doing the Behance things. So it was sort of interesting to, mm -hmm. uh, to have this new way of doing things, but it yeah. feels very much the same. Right. Very similar. We've been live on Behance weekly since October, I believe, announced at Adobe Max. 2017 and we will be other places this year we'll be doing this weekly we are here every tuesday through thursday mostly and every week there's a different theme so if this is your first time tuning in this week is mobile illustration we had desktop illustration last week and next week i believe is xd maybe adobe live can let me know what's what are we covering next week do you know Anybody? we're conjuring it i believe it's xd but I am not positive. So XD is very different from Mobile Illustration, and we love covering the whole gamut, gambit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's XD next week, awesome. So if you want to learn how to use Adobe XD, it's an awesome prototyping uh, application. It's really powerful, really quick, and I think cuts out the middleman, quite frankly. All right. Well, we're we're making progress in terms of making this look uh, more organic, giving it a little more uh, <coughs> solidity. I haven't been working on the dog though. Any any suggestions ah. for a second color Ooh. on the dog? Because he uh, he or she, I don't know. You decide. Is it a she or a he? Mm -hmm. um, is all just blue at this moment, and I think maybe a second color is in order. All right, maybe we could bring in that hot pink. <laughs> that is too. It's all about the hot pink. <laughs> Jay says gold would be cool. Oh, I like that, gold. Nice, yellow, yellow, purple. Let's try a little gold. Nice, Jenna says that she's loving the mobile app demos. She uses them on the train during her commute. So cool to see others' processes. Processes, awesome, Jenna. So glad to hear that you already use these marvelous apps. Like we've said, they're free. I've seen a couple of people say that they can't enter the contest because they don't have uh, the desktop apps, but never fear, you can download these apps on your tablet or mobile device for free. Very easy, very awesome. All right, so let's see how this works in terms of a gold uh, color. Oops. 
You have to make a smaller brush here. And one sort of basic thing about digital drawing that is uh, very helpful for me is this idea of being able to enlarge the drawing with your fingers. Oh, you know, yeah. in a way you're just you're seeing it larger than you could ever see it in normal life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try moving this down below. Oh, I like that. A little bit of gold. Gary says, Mark is my hero. I drew Gax and posted on my Instagram and he commented on it. Oh. Famous. Oh, you know what I forgot about? The blinky eyes. We're gonna remember we're gonna do blinky eyes. Ooh. Thank you for your kind words, and I'm very uh, honored that I was able to uh, help you yes. with your drawings, and I'm very glad that I replied or commented. <laughs> yeah, Yoni says, "Don't forget the blushies on the dog." Oh, the blushy! Wait, the dog gets blushies. Everybody gets a blushie. Hey, wait a minute, guys! You get a blushie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice Are suggestion with the gold there. I think. Yes. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and do then this idea of the um, glowy, blinky eyes. I think Ooh. was the suggestion that we had. Maybe hot pink would work for that. And did you just use the eyedropper tool? I don't know. I did. Oh, I, I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pick I colors that you've into. previously used, just like in the desktop apps. It's an eyedropper tool. Super easy. Uh, if you see, I believe, you can just tap on your actual drawing and it'll suck up the color from it. Oh, but really? you don't have to use it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to get do a sort of an airbrushy effect. And again, I'm trying to think what is going to give me that airbrushy ah. kind of look for the glowing eyes. Interesting. You can always use the watercolor brush, but at a very light value. Maybe the spray but of a very light yellow. Let's try spray here. Now I'm gonna do a hot pink. Ah. Oh yeah, hey, that's looking very much like what I was hoping for. Perf. Love it when that happens. Mm, the glowing eye. Oh. And suddenly oh, he's oh. evil. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get the center of it to be a little white. He does sort of start to look evil. He's looking right into your soul with his <laughs> robot eyes. What have you done? He sees your secrets and he is not impressed. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I keep doing this wrong. When I try to pinch, I end up uh, drawing. That is my, it gives away my <laughs> novice status. It's the one thing, it's your tell. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that this would benefit from being, having a, a little more shades of blue. Ooh, yeah. More than just one shade of blue, so I'm gonna try to find. Very nice. Leah is wondering, have you ever watched Cowboy Bebop? I uh, unfortunately have missed that one. You know, the, the most recent uh, anime that my daughter and I are gonna watch together is uh, Noragami. Ah. Uh, which I did um, a video on just mm -hmm. last week, I think. I right? saw that. I've never, I don't believe I've ever really uh, jumped into that anime. I think I've watched like one episode. I right, like, I saw the, the sort of debut episode and we're gonna watch it all together. I think my daughter has maybe seen everything already, but she'll go back oh. for me and watch it a second time. How kind of her. Yes, it's gonna <laughs> be fun. It'll be a bonding thing. Um, my son and I would watch the Full Metal Alchemist stuff. Now we didn't see the whole thing, but we saw quite a lot of them. Oh man, we just rewatched the whole well Brotherhood. There's two different kind of uh -huh. arcs, but we, I just rewatched it. So good, especially as an adult. I watched that like as a young teen. Didn't get it all. That I, makes sense. I heard uh, bad things uh, again. Sorry, Netflix. But really? I heard you mean bad the things or about the, the Full Metal Alchemist uh, movie. I, oh, well, I, I, yes. At first, I wasn't even aware that one was being made, frankly. It just appeared. And, um, but I'm, I'm hearing from Full Metal Alchemist fans that it's kind of a disappointment. It was. It's a shame. I watched about 10 minutes and said, no more. Because you kind of feel like shame. this is your one chance, and, and they kind of keep blowing it again and again, on not yeah. just Netflix, but a lot of different people. Every time they ghost in the show, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it seems like they just get it wrong. 
I wonder what is the best out of all of them. Does anyone, any ideas? Folks? Yeah, chat, do you have any favorite kind of jump from? Has Hollywood ever done it right? That's the question. <laughs> it seems like they keep kind of messing it up every time they try to do some sort of anime inspired. I'm trying to think. I believe there's a show right now on Netflix called Erased that they made from manga into live action and that's pretty popular. Oh, nice. But I could be totally wrong. I haven't actually watched it. I've just heard about it. Well, you know, every anime, or not uh, not everyone, but almost every anime has some sort of really interesting premise to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they, they and, and they make great stories as the original anime. All you have to do is just hire actors and do the live action version, but they yeah. always end up messing around with it. Right. And somehow making bad decisions. And, I know. It sometimes um, maybe it's just the idea that some specific stories and worlds don't translate as well into what we can mm -hmm. show in a film. Uh, I believe someone said that they did the same thing with the Dark Tower. Yeah, Rob, they really botched the Dark Tower. It's a shame. <laughs> Super sad. And again, you know, I can't speak as a fan of that particular franchise, but it's got to be kind of heartbreaking because when you think this is it. This yeah. is the probably never do it again. I know? remember reading those books years ago and hearing there were glimmers of a, a full-fledged movie on the horizon. I said, no, they're never going to make that. That would be amazing. And they did, and it was terrible. <laughs> well, kind of well. Shame. Right, but to, to lighten the mood a little bit, chat, the deadline for the challenge has passed, and we have some amazing submissions for this segment challenge. I am really excited to show you these submissions, Mark. Oh, okay. So I take a break here and look sure, at... Sure, uh, yeah. Um, we have quite a few. So let me remind you again, chat, that the challenge today was to create some sort of robot, either using wow. uh, Adobe Photoshop Draw or Illustrator Sketch, which are both mobile apps, or you could use the desktop versions, Photoshop or Illustrator. Now, do uh, they create these in advance or do they create no, these just now? Just while we're, now. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Yes. Who did that one? I'm not sure of the name. Maybe Adobe Live can remind me in the chat, but this is their sketch. That was how they started. Oh, look at mm -hmm. that. It's beautiful. I know. Really love, love the color it. choices. Yes. And I love the composition. Very atmospheric and nice. Mm. Nice. So as you can see, I've got the tabs at the top of my screen. That is how many submissions we have to look at. Wow. Nice. So the way that we like to do this is I'll show you all the submissions. We can give a little bit of feedback. Beautiful. And then we'll pick from maybe That's a That's cool. I love how the limbs are sort of separate, you know, maybe held together by magnetism or something yeah. like that. That's very cool. And the colors as well. Some love it. Some unknown force. And I love this maybe symbolism of some sort of artificial intelligence reaching for mm. fruit. I love the gradient, you know, how it goes from light to dark, from the top of the image down to the bottom. Yeah, right. And that's a, that's a good solve for not having a background for an image. Just adding something back there to give a little context mm. for the piece. So this one was by Jason. Oh, I see. Okay, so the first one was by Jason Roy. That was Jason, and this one... Siraj. S Siraj. Nice Beautiful job. work. I believe this one is by... Oh, I like it. There, I look a hint of a Gax head there. You got yep. the helmet. Mm -hmm. A little <laughs> bit of kitty action, maybe a little bit of a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> they say LOL. <laughs> this is a funny design. And it, I believe that they used... Um, Maybe it's either sketch or draw because I recognize some of these shapes. Yeah. From the app, some of these. Nice job. Thanks for using the mobile app. And who apps. is this? What's the name? Of? I believe it was by Yui, but I think Yui. That, that she left. Oh, sorry, we lost nice you. Job. Oh my goodness, look at that. This is by Phoenix. Why am I here? <laughs> who made me? I love that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that little pose, the arched hip, yeah. and the hand on the and head. And this is a good example of how just a few colors, just using a few colors, can be beautiful. Uh, what they call the limited palette. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't need to be a drawback. It really can be a plus. Mm hmm Definitely. And who Ooh. was the one who did that one? I'm sorry. This one was by Phoenix. Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Nicely done, Phoenix. This is by Tim. Oh, I love it. See, let's show, get a wide variety of styles here. Yeah, I really love it. And this, this definitely one. has the sort of ink on top and the color behind it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, this is really textural, and I believe it's made in Photoshop Sketch. So nice job. This is by <laughs> Joe. Look at that. Now, they've really <laughs> thought through the sort of the transportation mode here mm -hmm. in the wheels and how it could be standing up or then leaning down. Yeah. You, you start to imagine how it uh, changes poses and so forth. Nice job, Joe. And I believe he mentioned earlier that he was home watching uh, a baby today. So maybe wow. this is inspired oh, I love by it. his at-home life it. right now. 
Nice. Nice job, Joe. Oh, there's another beautiful one. And again, the limited palette, just a few colors, mm -hmm. but that makes it beautiful. Yeah, what do you think about these really stark blue highlights or almost red? Yeah, I, I was noticing that. It's an interesting little mm -hmm. sort of underlayer of blue just peeking through here and there, and I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, nice job in the very geometric aspect of I like the shadows. yellow eyes. Mm -hmm. really Interesting. Pop. Nice job, the Fulgen Show. This is by Ryan. This almost looks like Terminator, maybe. It's interesting. You see, you see some commonalities in color choices and different right. things and by unrelated people. Right. The blue and the yellow is coming in with mm. the gray. I believe this is also used used a Photoshop sketch to be created. So nice job. Nicely done. Yeah. To remind you all, the Adobe Creative Cloud mobile apps are free. You can use them. Wow, that's interesting. Them. Look at that. It's a bird. Yeah. Look at this little robot. squiggle leg. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Who did this one? This is by Brian. Brian. Yes. Beautiful work, Brian. I love really that. Really nice, Brian. I don't believe I've seen one of your submissions before, Brian, so great job. Ooh. There's a lot of movement in here. It looks like he's whooshing yeah. in a certain direction. Nice. Looks like probably are also created in Photoshop Sketch. Great job. This is by Wayne. Octo killer. All right, now I, lo I love the fun, you know, the sort of spirit of fun and yeah. uh, the cartooniness and sort of embracing the humor of it. Very nice. She's so happy and she's got Octo some blushes. <laughs> what does octopi do to Apologies you? Apologies to any octopi who are watching the live stream right yeah, now. Yeah, look I'm, away. I know. <laughs> <laughs> look away. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Nice job, Wayne. Thank you for submitting. Looks like it was created with Photoshop Sketch, so great job. Nice. Feed me. Feed me. It's going to be impossible. To, I'm supposed to choose one person out oh, of all yeah. these? Oh, no. And then everyone else hates me. <laughs> oh, look at the, Is that the Adobe uh, insignia there? Mm -hmm. That is a clever ploy to win over Adobe's <laughs> affections, and it works every yeah. time. Yeah. Dre, I'm not sure if you're saying something about us, saying that maybe we're sloths. <laughs> need to be fed. Adobe sloth. Tell us what you mean. <laughs> but this is actually one of our previous winners. So great job, Dre Sanchez. Or Sanchez Dre. Ooh. Wow. Okay, here's the Iron Giant. Yeah, I was like, this guy looks familiar. Uh oh. It's going very. It must be a big file. We can just look at it like this. So nice. And it looks like they used the. Um, leaky fountain pen. Oh, do they? It has a very oil painty look to it, and I love the sort of secondary light source. Oh, you get to see the process yeah. here? Yeah. Interesting. Very good job, John Sullivan. And this is a nice little tip that I'd like to give you, chat. You can see right here that you can appreciate projects. I'll appreciate it or follow John. Uh, and you can do that by just clicking on each other's little faces in the chat. That'll take you right to your friend's Behance portfolios and you can follow from there. We'll talk about old man time lapse. So this part of the software is very there you go. It's like automated old man time lapse. Mm -hmm. It does it for you. That's great. Yeah, that secondary light source really adds to it, doesn't it? Yeah, very nice job, John. Beautiful. It's by Juan Camilo. Oh, this one has a full background. I think this is one of the few ones yeah, full that context. took on the challenge of the full background like that. Yeah, I love this kind of like brain, organic matter mixed with robot mm, Interesting. You got a little flower in yeah. the soil. Even the shadow is representational of yeah. his actual shape. Those, the, the sort of pyramid, the blue of the pyramid shapes is really quite effective for mm -hmm. like instead of having the shadows be... Uh, gray or uh, black or right. whatever. That, that blue is really works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almost alarming. Nice job, one. Wow, Ooh. interesting. See, sort I, of. I wouldn't even know it was a robot, but it's beautiful. Yeah. So it looks like a seahorse. Yeah, it's kind of like a mech version. Wow, I want to hear more about this character. Yeah, we're seeing a real wide variety of. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice job. Oh, this looks like another little. Maybe it's an animation or a time lapse. Nice. This is by our friend Cedric. Cedric. Looks like he almost built this to be animated with its little pins and puppeteering. What is he going to be holding? Oh, it's the Gus Bot. Somebody oh, it's drew the him. the Gus Bot. I was thinking, what is the letter G? That's so for? funny. So it's Gus Bot. He's holding a ban hammer. In case Don't. anybody causes trouble in the chat, he will ban them. <laughs> this is his trusty doggo, Kakashi. 
awesome. I love this, and I hope Gus Bot is seeing this and loving it. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving two thumbs up. <laughs> nice job, Cedric. That's awesome. All oh, wow. right. I love the variety of stuff we're seeing here. Look at that. Different colors, different line work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really nice It mixture. really just shows you how much... You know, no two artists are exactly the same. Not at all. There's a nice mixture of the angular lines mixed with this really organic texture. Nice job, Joel. Great colors also. Wow. This is by Lindsay. Cool. Nice job, Lindsay. I love that. And so we, this is almost like a character concept work for an mm -hmm. animated series or something. Yeah. Right, a little turnaround of this little Jube the Jedi Bunny Bot. Jubie. <laughs> That's very cool. I love mm -hmm. that design. Love it. And I love the simplification of very textured. This was all done during this live chat yep. stream? Oh, my goodness. That's what we believe. This is amazing. Really? Nice job, Lindsay. And this is by Coco Intolerance. This looks like BMO from Adventure Time. Having a little coffee, or is that what that is? A little ramen, it looks like. Oh, ramen, is that what that is? Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and the uh, the eyes illuminate the uh, the scene. That's awesome. He looks sad, but like he's doing his due diligence. Maybe the ramen is not his favorite flavor. Maybe. Could be. <laughs> so, chat, those are the uh, options that we have for now. I believe I missed a couple, so I'll get those open in just a bit, and I'll also narrow down the list a little bit so Mark won't have to choose from, like, 20 different options. But thank you so much for submitting. Yes, those were amazing. Every single one of them really was uh, beautiful. Right, and maybe when we're looking at the top options, we can give a little bit of critique, feedback, if you'd like that chat, and the winner of the challenge will win a free year of Creative Cloud if you have not won previously. So we're hopping back over to Mark's screen, and I'll get the rest of these open. Right. Well, boy, I'm impressed with the uh, skills out there, folks. I don't know if I'm worthy to be... Uh, you should be the people doing the live stream, and I should be at home watching. <laughs> well, you can always some. watch again, chat, if you want to watch it on the uh, Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that, and all of these streams are live as soon as they end. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be asking me about, you know, people who missed the live uh, stream are going to be asking, well, can we watch it? You know, so I'm going to be making sure that I get that info out to uh, any unfortunate souls who weren't <laughs> able to see it. I know that this is this time in, in uh, the West Coast of the USA, a lot of um, people are in school mm -hmm. or at work and are just not able to view it. But I, we want to make sure that those people at least get to watch later on. Right. And I always recommend that you watch live Tuesday through Thursday, and then the weekend is for the replays, or mm. even Friday or Monday. We also do, um, on Monday, little refreshers on Facebook sometimes, where it'll be like an hour-long tutorial on the apps that are going to be covered in that week's streams, so you're not totally blindsided. Adam says, it is 10 p.m. here in Hungary, so you have his full attention. <laughs> oh, all right. Shout out to everyone in Hungary. <laughs> I've never been to Hungary myself, but it, I've seen photos. Looks like a beautiful country. Oh, yeah. Any other ideas for things that I can work into this? Uh, we're probably coming down to the last, what, 20 minutes or something? Am I? Yeah, we have 15 minutes until the stream ends, and we still have to pick a winner. That's right. So we're really down at the end of it. I'm afraid it uh, maybe is not as beautiful as I wanted it to be, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, Billy Bob in chat is wondering who did the robot on the swing. That was Jason Roy in chat did the robot on the swing. I'm going to try to add just a little more... Uh, shading here. <clears throat> Michelle says, I think I may have to become a regular viewer here. I have thoroughly enjoyed this stream. Awesome, Michelle. Thank you so much. Like well, I thank you. Yeah. Mark made it happen. Mark made you well, a regular viewer. I, I do what I can. I, th <laughs> I, I still feel like I'm totally new at all of this stuff, but I do... I uh, enjoy interacting with people. The immediacy of it, you know, it's just... Uh, it's fun. It really is. Right, someone was wondering actually earlier in chat if after doing this you might be willing to do a live stream on your YouTube channel. 
I should try. Um, yeah. the th I mean, the benefit of doing it here is that I have you, Kathleen, and I mm -hmm. have there's people behind the scenes. Should we shout out the, the people who help us out in the uh, background? Oh, heck yeah. We've got Paco over here. He's a studio manager, wizard, GusBot3000, as always, and our wonderful moderators in chat. The um, true heroes. So that does help uh, in terms of me not having to worry about that stuff. But I should go ahead and try to make the, you know, take the plunge and do. I'm gonna in the month of April. I might have a little more time than what I normally have, so that ah. might be a good time for. I'm doing something here that I think is working out for me, and that is using kind of straight black, uh, but reducing the opacity and the flow. And it's just allowing me to get in gently uh, darker, ver it sort of looks like the darker versions of the same colors. And I think it is helping to uh, make this a little more three-dimensional looking. Nice. It's gonna be like almost impossible to choose a winner though of, of, of the, I mean, there were so many beautiful robots there. Yeah, it's really, it's there. I'm, it comes I'm in, to a point of I'm in awe of you guys. Definitely. And chat, we really like to celebrate uh, creativity and also exploration. Like if this might be your first time using these apps and you create something and submit it, that's awesome. It also takes a lot of bravery for you to send us your work and have hundreds of other people see it. So thank you for, for doing that, being vulnerable. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Uh, Adam says, Mark, if you ever come to Hungary, he'll buy you coffee or goulash. <laughs> the goulash is on you. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm there. There you go. Get me over to Hungary. That's awesome. Get him a cappuccino and he's good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> the cappuccino fueled this uh, live stream today. Special thanks to the cappuccino. Yes. Maybe wonderful. that'll be my new character. Ah. Krilly's cappuccino. <laughs> Nice. So, chat, if you are just tuning in, this is not the only stream for the day. We've got Kyle T. Webster coming up next, and we have Jax Jackson finishing out the day. Uh, both awesome illustrators and both very different. So you'll see a wide range of technique and be educated on that. So we have until about 5 p.m. today, right? Yeah, that's when it ends. And then we'll be back tomorrow and the next day. So we go from 9 to 5 p.m. every Tuesday through Thursday, there's an awesome schedule behind me. We had Rocky in the morning, hosted by Rob. We are, of course, with Mark Crilly right now, hosted by yours truly. We got <laughs> Kyle coming up next with Brooke, and then Jack's finishing out the day. So make sure that you are sticking around, picking up their pro tips, um, entering the challenge, and making new submissions if you haven't submitted yet. Also, maybe winning a giveaway. Who knows? Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone who, who simply showed up to watch this live stream. It's not a guaranteed thing, and uh, it made it way more fun to get these comments. And uh, as you can see, you know, with the dog and with the old man time-lapse graffiti, <laughs> you guys definitely uh, added to the whole experience and altered the um, direction of this illustration in a very real way, yeah. which made it very fun for me been fun fun to watch fun to see you explore this app in chat i hope that you are also downloading these mobile apps and trying them out for yourself i have like a, a top five to seven choices okay would you like to look at them give some feedback and okay pick a all right here we go we're going through the top five to seven and uh give some little uh, bits of feedback and then after that, I suppose I need to make a choice, huh? Yes. So we have about five minutes to pick a winner. We'll look at maybe give all these submissions about 30 seconds to a minute. And um, Jack, your submission will be looked at in the next stream. So no worries. This one is by Siraj. Yeah, this one is really striking. Uh, and uh, I like pretty much everything about it. You know, I'm, I'm very hesitant to uh, try to critique anything. I suppose if... Um, if you're going to devote more time to this piece and you want to know what should I put my effort into, mm -hmm. uh, I might look into the background, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, I like that the background falls back and doesn't compete with the foreground, but you might want to play around with sort of some streaks of cloudy material. Yeah, that'd be very cool. Something distantly back there, you know. Yeah. Play around with it, see what, what you get out yeah. of it. Yeah, nice job, Siraj. This is by Phoenix. I love this. Why am mm -hmm. I here? 
Um, well, again, I love those colors. I love the sort of gentle. You know, this is a, like a non-linear approach. There's are some there's some line work, but there's uh, it yeah. shows that you can do an illustration without lines. Very painterly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job, Phoenix. This is by Tim Peterson. So interesting. Yeah. yeah again, you know, it's not, if, if for me to offer crit critiques on things is tricky sometimes because the, stylistically they're going for their own thing, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not in a position to say, oh, this is. Uh, what you need to do or, you know, do something different or whatever. Right. I feel like maybe this line up top here could be cleaned up a little bit, finished, as they might say, like maybe done in this. Well, yeah, leaky. the other line work, and I don't know if that is that leaky fountain pen or not, but the uh, uh, th those are beautiful, those uh, lines, yes. the way they have that sort of scratchy look to them. So. Totally agree. This is by Juan Camilo. Yeah, very striking. Yeah, we said we liked these. Very colorful chromatic mountains. And a in the full background. background, one of the few ones that did uh, go for a background. Yes, has a lot of space, no pun intended. It's interesting when you think of the other one that had the apple as this bright color, and this one has the flower as the bright color, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're both uh, blue and orange. Yeah, working independently, they had a sort of a similar thing. Yeah, definitely. Nice job. This one we didn't show. Right, last. this is my first time seeing this, this one. This is by Madison. I love that some people did not do the sort of humanoid robot, mm. but did uh, different animals and stuff. Yeah, it almost looks like a dragon. Guarding yeah. its keep. Nice job also using these kind of muddy earthen colors mm. that you're such a fan of. Nice job, Madison. Oh, yeah, that was the first one I think we saw. Mm -hmm. That is nice. Very atmospheric. Love mm. it. And it's super realistic in the way that it is rendered, but the shape is very stylized. This one feels like it's part of a story to me. It, it almost feels like a still yeah. frame from an animated film. Totally mm. agree. And it, it encourages you to imagine what happens next, what happened before. Totally. You saw this. She's thinking about something. This is by Joel Jensen. That one would look awesome on a t-shirt. Yeah, you know what I mean? screen printed. It almost looks like a t-shirt. I was right gonna now. say it looks like it's built to be screen printed. Nice job. This is almost a very Tracy Ching, which is one of our past uh, guests. This is a very similar style to what she does. Nice job, Joel. Mm. And so those are the top options. Do any really jump out to you as the winner? Wow, out of these top options, it is so hard to choose just one. Oh my goodness. Or maybe we could pick a top two and pick from those choices. Well, if I have to choose out of out of this current selection, mm -hmm. I think the the robot on the swing set is the one that I keep coming back All to. Right. As I was saying, and this is the storyteller in me, that is the one that really makes me feel I'm looking at at a still frame of mm -hmm. of a movie of some kind or something, and it really intrigues me. Um, and again, it also it's one of the ones that has a full background. Yeah, it's fully finished. And the composition, idea. you know, have, shifting the character off to the right-hand side and leaving the sort of blank space over to the left, it really contributes to this idea of a scene in a movie, because that's how they would do it. They wouldn't necessarily have the character dead center. No. They would shift it off to the side like that and create a composition like mm -hmm. that. So... If I have to choose one, that is probably the one I'm going to have to choose. But can I shout out to one that you didn't select oh, for the final? Sure, sure. Which the one? The one that was the bird. I want to oh, give Brian's. an award for originality because yes. that was really its own thing, mm -hmm. both in terms of the concept of, of doing a bird uh, as a robot mm -hmm. and then the just uh, the look of it, the right. line work, everything about that was one of a kind. Right, and Brian, who created the bird, is one of our previous winners. So okay, so I'm glad that I didn't choose work. that because that would have uh, <laughs> been uh, too too many winnings for one. Right. Person. So great job, Jason. You are the proud owner of a free year of Creative Cloud. Adobe Live will be in contact with you via your Behance messages. And I do apologize to anyone who didn't win. It doesn't mean uh, that I didn't love your work uh, just as much because it was just like I said, almost impossible to choose. Right. And we have about a minute left, so maybe you can cover what you did today and what you're going to be doing tomorrow for the chat. Oh, okay. Well, this um, today was really just me um, playing around with the robot idea and trying my best to get your uh, suggestions worked into the illustration. Uh, that was kind of at the heart of it today. And then also for me personally to keep working on my abilities to make sort of painterly, uh, organic-looking illustration work. I do think that this would benefit from... 
uh, more time, as I'm sure you guys felt when you were working on your illustrations. As we but, always feel. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to be taking an, an illustration, a kind of completed ink illustration from Brody's Ghost, ah. and I'm going to be um, doing all of the coloring and toning right here live uh, right. In, during the live stream. It's going to be different from anything I've done before, and we're going to be able to see how uh, using the digital, uh, you know, drawing on an iPad Pro is going to result in a very different type of toning, probably more organic. Yeah. Who knows? It's going to look very different from what I did uh, in the book. So please do come yes. back tomorrow. I'm very excited about what we're going to be able to do. Awesome chat. Thank that. you for being here. Like you said, we'll be back tomorrow, but stick around now because we'll be back in just a couple minutes with Kyle and Brooke working on some mobile magic, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm seeing some mischievous <laughs> glimmers over there. So stick around, everyone. Don't go anywhere, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.